Hi everyone, I'm Jack and for this video I'm going to show you how I paint realistic insects on the collaged backgrounds. Um, we're going to start by do, uh, transferring an image onto the canvas. I'm going to show you how to do that and then um, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step layering process to make your insect look realistic and then we'll cap everything off with shadowing and then adding a cast shadow to make the insect look like it's sitting on the canvas. Um, so let's go and get started. So for this painting, I'm starting with the background that I collaged onto a wooden panel. I tore a couple of pages out of an old comic book and glued them down. Then I added a couple coats of clear matte medium, which will allow me to paint on top of it. We're going to begin this painting by transferring the outline of the insect, in this case a beetle, onto the background. The first thing we're going to do is turn my page upside down and cover the back with graphite using my pencil. Once I have my back covered, I'm going to turn it over and position it on my background. Then put a piece of tape across the top to hold it in place. Now I simply trace over the outer edges of the picture with my pencil and the graphite will transfer onto my background. It's pretty faint, but you can start to see the line I'm making right here. Now, it's really important that we leave the picture taped to the panel so I can use the hinge I've created with the tape to check my work as I go. I can see this, but it's very faint, so I'm going to go over it with my pencil. If there are any areas that did not transfer well, I can place the picture down and trace over it again. Another way to do this is to use transfer paper that you can buy at the craft store. It comes in both white and black. The white is useful if you have dark areas in your background where it's hard to see the graphite. Now I have my outline transferred on my background and I'm ready to paint my first layer. For my first layer, I'm going to paint the entire subject in just one solid color. For this, it's best to choose the color that makes up the majority of the subject or looks as though it's lying beneath all the other colors. In the case of this beetle, that color is black. So I'm simply filling in the outline shape of my beetle with black. It's also important to leave your picture in place and not remove the tape because we'll be doing another transfer process later. So I've finished my first layer and let it dry completely. Now I'm ready to transfer on the details of my subject over the black using the white transfer paper. Once I have this transfer complete, I can now remove the tape and put my picture aside. Now for materials, I have my palette, my palette knife for mixing colors and an assortment of small detail brushes. I have a cup of water. 
and a paper towel. Then I have my colors. I have chosen all the colors I think I might use in the painting. Black, yellow, and brown are obvious choices. But I also have dark purple and blue, which are the complementary colors to yellow and brown. That means I can use them in small amounts to make darker shades of those colors, rather than using black, which is gonna dull down my color. For a pro tip, it's always good to start with more colors than you think you'll need and put them all out on your palette. If you don't put them all out, you will be less likely to use them when you should. This is a beginner mistake. It's better to have a color on the palette go unused than to not use a color you should have because it wasn't immediately available. Now, I always like to begin in the place that looks to me like the easiest place to start. To me, that is the yellow areas of the beetle. So I'm going to start by mixing up a few different shades of yellow. Now I already realized that I need an additional color to my palette. I need a little red because the yellow has a little orange tinge to it. Never hesitate to add more colors to your palette. I'll mix up a medium color or my main color and then I'll mix a darker shade as well as a lighter shade. Now I'm ready to paint. I'll start by applying my main color to the entire area. Then while the paint is still wet, I'll apply the other tones and mix them with the main color where I want things to blend. Since the other shape is darker, I'll start that shape with a dark color and then blend in the two lighter shades. Now I'll go to each shape and do the same thing. Mixing the colors I need, applying them, and blending as needed. I'm not going to cover blending techniques as much in this video. Blending is rather difficult to teach or explain. It's more of a feeling or responding in the moment to what colors are doing when you're mixing them together on your painting. Just make sure that the colors you're trying to blend are both wet. If one color starts to dry, it's not gonna blend properly and you may need to reapply it or wait until the next layer to fix it. This is why it's good to complete small sections at a time. Also, don't expect things to look perfect in this layer. You're probably not gonna get the best coverage over your first layer and the blending is gonna look kind of rough. This is fine. It's not supposed to look perfect at this point. Your next layer is when things start to come together in a realistic way. So now I'm ready for my third and final layer. I got myself a fresh palette, and again, I will put out all of my colors. In this layer, I'll repeat what I did in the previous layer, going shape by shape, applying color and blending. But this time I'll get better coverage, and I'll also get my colors more accurate because I can compare what I currently have down with the picture and see where I need to tweak certain colors. In this layer, I'll also add some highlights with some very light versions of my colors. I'm also able to focus on some of the finer details in this layer, since I don't have to think as much about big color shapes. 
Painting is a lot about reducing the amount of stuff you need to focus on so you can focus more intently on one or two things at a time. And we do this by painting in layers. So in the first layer, we focused on placing our subject on the page, drawing its outline, and applying a base color. So now we won't have to think about those things again. In the second layer, we focused on mixing colors and applying them to create the different shapes that make up the subject. Again, now this part is done, and in our third layer, we can just focus on the details and color accuracy. Now we're ready to create the shadow. But before we do, I want to give a quick crash course on cast shadows or shadows that are being cast by an object. Rule number one, choose a direction for your light source and the shadow will always be cast in the opposite direction of that light source. Rule number two, the shadow will always start from where the object is touching the surface. So if I draw a cube with an overhead view, like this, I want my shadow to come from the bottom of the cube, like this. Rule number three. The shadow will mimic the shape of the cube. So if I have my light source going diagonally across the corner of a cube, the end of the shadow will be shaped like the corner. Now I'll draw the shape of my beetle and have the light source coming from overhead, but also from the top left. So the shadow will be cast to the bottom right, mimicking the shape of the subject. Now the feet of the beetle are the touch points, so that is where the shadow meets with the subject. The shadow will then get larger and further away from the subject as you move toward the midsection, which is the most raised portion. Okay, now we're ready to draw our shadow on the painting. I'm going to first draw the shadow's outline in pencil so I can figure out where it needs to be placed. Now, it's simply a matter of filling in that outline with a wash or glaze using black. I'm going to start off with a very light wash because once you go too dark, you can't go back. So I'll add a generous amount of water to my paint to thin it out. This technique can take some practice, so if you haven't done this before, I recommend watching my video on scumbling and glazing techniques. So that's it. That's how you paint an object to look like it's sitting on top of whatever background you choose. 